Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, thanks for stopping by. My name's Tolu and on this channel I share content all around personal finance, budgeting, frugal living and I show you how to live your best life on a budget. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back to watch another video. It's amazing to have you here with me again today. So in today's video, guys, what I'm going to be doing is bringing you season two, episode number 11 of my Instagram live series, Tea Money Talk. So on today's episode, I was joined by the amazing Benedicta. She's actually the founder of Benny Ratio Finances. She's a finance coach and an accountant, and she is so knowledgeable when it comes to the area of personal finances and business finances too. So in this live, what we did is we talked at length about the subject of taxes. Like I know Taxes is one of those subjects that we don't want to talk about, but it's something that we all have to deal with and have to navigate in some way, shape or form. So in this live, what we did is we really debunked some of those myths when it comes to taxes. We talked about different types of taxes. We talked at length about all these myths, what is true and what is not true, what to do, what not to do when it comes to taxes. So taxes, business taxes, self-employed taxes, all of these subjects are areas that you're interested in and know more about. Then you're going to want to stay tuned for this episode of Team Money Talk. Awesome. Hi guys, I am Benedicta, founder of Benny Ratio Finances. Benny Ratio Finances is all about helping people with their personal and business finance. And if I'm honest, more so the business finance nowadays, I am a qualified accountant um, and I am able to do like your tax returns, advise you on um, your, um, your business tax, how to take out money from your company, all of that kind of stuff, your corporation tax returns, those things that HMRC and companies house be knocking on your door for. <laughs> I'm here to help you out with that. Um, but other just general tips as well around business finance and you know cash flow management, pricing your products for profitability and those kinds of things. So that's me, Benedicta from Benny Ratio Finances. Yay, thank you. No, good, good, great introduction. And I guess before we dive into the fun topic of taxes, um, what I like to do at the beginning of the live is do a bit of an icebreaker. So it's a would you rather type game. So what I'm going to do is give you a number of different scenarios and you're basically going to tell me would you rather A or B. So you pick one of the two options. And you guys at home, you can play along too. Like I've done some of these questions before, so you may be familiar with them. And for those that are not, yeah, you can play along too. So question one, you ready? Yep. Cool. Okay. So would you rather go to a restaurant by yourself or go to a cinema by yourself? Ooh, a restaurant by myself. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I think I'll do the cinema, you know, because it's dark and then no one will see that I'm like by myself. The oh, restaurant no, I've thing. had restaurants by myself before. Really? Yeah, I like to, um, especially if it's like by the sea or by the water, because then I can, or the river, because then I can think. But with yeah. the cinema, I like to talk. Uh, sorry, I'm not annoying person <laughs> oh, in the movie. <laughs> I'm like, oh, why do you do that? What's going on? So I need someone to convers <laughs> conversate with. <laughs> Oh my days, you're me, literally. I do it to my husband all the time. He gets so annoyed. He's like, why are you asking me? It's my first time watching it as well, but I just want to know. So, okay, cool. So you'd rather go to a restaurant. And I can see someone in the comments has said restaurant as well. So we've got a couple of restaurant people. And um, Natalie said restaurant. Okay, cool. So the next one, would you rather be always cold or always hot? Always hot. Give me the heat really? every and any day. I... I'm angry when I'm cold. So <laughs> that's not a good place to be. So yeah, hot, 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 hot. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, again, I'm the opposite. I prefer to be cold because I feel like I can lay up, lay up. But when I get hot, especially at night, being hot at night is, yeah, the worst thing People for me. People say that, but honestly, for me, the heat, and maybe it's not just the heat, it's more the heat and the sun. Like, mm. I think it's a combination that I like. So like the brightness. Whereas when yeah, I think yeah. about cold, I think about winter, I think about black, really? I think about dark. <laughs> I just think about everything that's not nice. <laughs> no, fair enough. Fair point, fair point. Okay, cool. So the next question I've got is, okay, this one, I don't know if it applies to you, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Would you rather have a terrible boss, but a great job? Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Or a terrible job. Oh, terrible boss. Sorry, start again. Would you rather have a terrible boss, but have a great job or a great boss and a terrible job that you hate? Um, I'm a people's person, so for me, I would rather have the, the, the better boss because I think even if the job is terrible, if the person's good and we get along, we can make it work, we can make it fun, we can do it in different ways. But if your boss is a witch or a wizard, <laughs> yeah, no, it's how are you going to get out of that no matter how much you like the job? No, that's a good point. Yeah, no, if you've ever had a really bad boss, you know that. Yeah, no, it doesn't work to doesn't worth it at all. <laughs> okay. Um, style, style on rotation said she, she doesn't like the summer fashion. It's weird. Okay. No, you see, I like 
summer clothes rather than the winter clothes actually so okay cool better boss you can grow grow with the boss yeah that's a good yeah, point yeah very good point okay cool next one talk a bit of a money related one actually would you rather win five million pounds tomorrow mm. or a hundred million pounds in 20 years five million pounds tomorrow because <laughs> i can flip that quickly yeah we'll be making more than a hundred <laughs> exactly years, so yeah yeah, no, I'm definitely with you. Listen, tomorrow's not guaranteed to nobody. So 20 years, exactly. that is you might far away. here in 20 years. <laughs> you know, obviously, God willing, we're still here, but you never know. Yeah. It. That's a long time <laughs> to be waiting. So yeah, no. Yeah, it's 5 million tomorrow. Definitely give me that. Um, okay, would you rather win a dream holiday, two-week vacation, worth £10,000, so to anywhere you want to go in the world, it could be one location all around the world, 10K, or would you rather £10,000 shopping spree in a department store of your choice? Mm, probably the vacation. I think experiences are more than, are better than things, because whatever you buy with that 10K, it will expire, go out of fashion, mm. go out of trend, but with the holiday, that will be for life, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah definitely i'm with you with that listen i'll be yeah i'll rather go on holiday experiences over things because like you said those things they lose value and yeah. once after a while it's just like yeah you don't care about it anymore whereas those experiences you have those memories yeah. for life so, snap definitely okay i'll do one more now okay which one of the two should i pick <laughs> now i'm gonna do this one actually would you rather find 50 pounds every day and have to spend it that same day so every single day you get fifty pounds and you have to spend it that day, or find twenty five pounds every day but have to save it. Twenty five pounds with the ability to save it because yeah. what are you gonna buy with fifty pounds every single day? But twenty five pounds you can add it all up and at the end of the month you can go for something bigger or end of the year or whatever. So, yeah. Yes. I like your logic. Yeah. <laughs> I think i I the last time I answered this, I think I said fifty pounds every day, but yeah, I think actually <laughs> Maybe the twenty five pounds might be looking forward because yeah, it might get old afterwards. Like fifty pounds, that I might want something that costs a thousand pounds. Exactly. How do you get it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, thank you. Thanks for playing along. Really cool. Is that the end of the line now? Can we go? Yeah. Bye. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the people will be happy. I think they'll be slightly disappointed. No, definitely not the end of the live. This is the part that they're probably all waiting for. <laughs> about taxes but no thanks for playing on that was, that was really good um just make sure i haven't missed anything in the comment section because i'm always bad at like the comments and the amount of time i'm reading them it has nothing to do with what we're talking about get so, yeah. the people to use the um question function guys come yeah, on please, technology guys. this is 21st century <laughs> <laughs> stop it yeah please guys if you have any questions for benedict so then yeah leave them in the question box and then we can ask them that way we don't miss out on any of the important questions and we get through it in order so yeah Brilliant. Okay, cool. So taxes, let's talk about taxes. I guess before we get into talking about taxes, it'll be good to kind of tell a little bit more about yourself, a bit more about your story, a bit more about your background, like what made you get into accounting and yeah, yeah, just a bit about your background, what led you to start Venue Ratio Finances and yeah, what led you down this path that you're currently on. Cool. So for me, I've always been good at numbers from a child, mm -hmm. like to the point I can remember when I was six years old and I was at school and I won a maths competition and we had oh, wow. to go to, yeah and we had to go to the local town hall and I still remember we had these cubes of like I can't remember, I don't know what they're called but there were these cubes anyway and we had to do like our times tables I know the ones you're talking about the and they clicked the together table. yeah exactly yeah. And then I always remember like 12 times 12 is 144. So wow. I, that's like my earliest memory of me with numbers and math. Yeah. I've always loved it. Um, so yeah, growing up as a child, good with numbers, A star GCSE student and all of that oh, kind wow. of stuff. Yeah, like that's how much, <laughs> that's how much I was good at math. But obviously I translated that into my money management. Um, and again, always just been good at saving, always been someone who can like <laughs> persevere, save a bit, multiply it do a bit of business here so like doing hair in school selling food in school all of that kind of entrepreneurial kind of stuff I was saying to myself the other day as well that I I'm I feel like I'm actually an entrepreneur by blood like my father he's a he's a businessman he's always been a businessman my mum is a serial entrepreneur she just knows how okay. to flip. she knows how to flip money like from the simplest it's not like they have big massive businesses they, yeah. they have had decent businesses but they've always been good with money so I yeah. think that kind of has flown in your through, DNA literally as the first child but yeah combining that with being good with numbers and all of that um when I went to uni 
I did, um, I did a course, I did business economics. And as part of that course, they force you to do financial accounting or they force you to do accounting. And I was just like, who in this world would want to be an accountant? That's so boring. All you do is look at spreadsheets. And also the fact that most accountants look at it at the end of the year. So it's like, okay, tell me what I don't already know. I don't have money. Like, yeah. why are you waiting until the end of the year to tell me that? So I thought it was useless. Um, and then in second year of uni, they made us again do management accounting. And I'm like, oh, what no, is this? Yeah. Nobody told me that there was this type of accounting. Where has this been my whole life? And basically what I found was that a lot of the concepts in management accounting, I had already been doing my life. Like, so planning and budgeting. So if anybody that doesn't know, financial accounting is backwards looking. So that's where you come in at the end of the year, you do the statements and you say, yeah, profit and loss. That's what we have to tell HMRC. That's what you have to tell companies house. But management accounting is in year. So in the year, I'm walking alongside you and I'm saying, okay, remember you've only got 12K for this year. How are you going to manage it this month? What about next month? Oh, it's looking like you're going to overspend by the end of the year. What can we do now to make sure that you don't? Okay, do we need to save a bit here? So it's much more like um, live, should I say. We're yeah. helping so that the end year position, we can almost begin to calculate the end year position. And so when I did that course, I was like, this is it. This is my profession. And so I literally went for it full force. I applied for like a placement that was with management accounting. I got um, put in, um, I started working in government. I got put in like a management finance business partner team. And I started learning about accounting more. Of course, you couldn't get away from the financial accounting, but it was a combination of both as opposed yeah. to just the other side. And yeah, the rest is history. Like, grew my career in that kind of role, did project finance type roles, helping people manage their projects. I'm talking about like billion pound funds from the government, like on a daily basis, going into these meetings, talking about how the money is being used, you know, how forecasting it, answering questions and all of that kind of stuff. Working with treasury, reporting to treasury, finance directors, sitting in board meetings, managing this money, using a skill that I was doing before I even knew that this was a thing. Uh -huh. So yeah, so that's where I'm at with that. But one of the things I always say and what led me to Benny Ratio Finances is that mm -hmm. no matter how many boardrooms I sat in, no matter how many important people I was reported to, it never gave me as much satisfaction as it did when I helped just a normal everyday person, my brother or my sister, my husband, who, who always claimed he was my first customer. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, before we were, this is before we were married, you know, like the, 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 the satisfaction you get of knowing that actually the same skill that I used to talk to these so-called important people, I translate that and I help someone manage their salary and pay off some debt, you know, help them save towards something. And the joy that comes, you know, the fact that it's like, no, this is actually life changing for them. Whereas yeah. when I sit in those rooms, let's be fair, anybody else could do that job. They could train anyone else to do that job. But the, the, the rapport that I can build with people, how I can help them on an individual basis is what made me um, set up Benny Ratio Finances. And here we are that's today. Absolutely amazing. No, that's absolutely amazing. I like the fact that you could, you could have just stayed, like, like you said, in the corporate world and just keep making money that way and yeah, make, helping these Don't people. Don't get me wrong, I still make the money in the corporate world. Oh, you're still, oh, you're still doing it. And you're, but yeah, but you could have just done that solely. But you're like, no, I'm actually going to take that skill and I'm going to use it to help people in the, every, the, the everyday man and woman yeah. to kind of help them themselves financially as well. Absolutely amazing way of giving back to, you know, love it. Uh, okay, cool. So moving on to my next question that I've got actually is, in terms of the last year, so since obviously Corona, or I don't know if I'd like to say that, but since the pandemic hit over the last year, have you noticed any kind of changes in terms of people like moving from maybe like to more, basically more people trying to do more businesses, so trying to diversify their income streams a lot more than possibly maybe the year before that? Definitely, definitely, definitely. I think it goes without saying that like, a lot of people have been more interested in business. Um, a lot of people were on furlough, so they had mm. a bit of free time. Um, for some people, it's like, okay, I've got free time. What am I going to do? Let me keep myself yeah. busy. Not necessarily because they thought they would lose their job, but more just from a keeping themselves busy and maybe trying to monetize their side hustle. And then from some people, it was from that fear of, actually, I've lost my job. I mm -hmm. want to um, complement or supplement the income that I've lost. You know, how can I do it? We also saw, so for me, for example, um, working from home constantly gave me so much more time as a consultant. So I currently work as a management consultant in um, one of the top four. And 
by default as a consultant you travel right so even yes. just before lockdown every week i was not at home like i was sleeping in hotels all week and all and you know coming back on the weekend i was tired i didn't have as much effort and energy to put into my business but then i didn't have to travel anymore so even for me my business was able to go upwards because i could take it more seriously i had more time no more commuting mm -hmm. no more being away from home i could do more customer calls and that kind of stuff so you see you saw that a lot of people as well who maybe already had a side hustle were able to also formalize their business a bit more mm -hmm. and make it more profitable just because they had more time um so yeah so that's the trend that happened via coronavirus um so definitely more people registering and taking their business serious and thinking about it and taking steps as well no nah, yeah no nah, I, th I thought that might be the case actually because i guess that was the same same experience for myself so i was actually made redundant last no, June, June. So yeah, literally once they done the first lot of furloughs and they weren't too sure what they were going to do next year, my company did like mass, <laughs> mass yeah, redundancy. Yeah. So I was made redundant that year too. So it was like, okay, I've, now I've got all this time. Let me really focus on building this side hustle up. So yeah, totally can relate to that and the experience of those other people too. So I guess why I really wanted to then have this conversation is knowing that a lot of people now are going back to work. So obviously, hopefully, fingers crossed, things are going to go back to normal and furlough's going to go and people are going to go back to normal work. And a lot of people that have started those side hustles over the last year are going to probably want to still continue doing those side hustles alongside their main um, jobs. Yeah. And yeah, what we don't want to do is start basically getting ourselves into trouble financially where it's like, yeah, we're now getting this income from an employer and we're getting this money from the side hustles and mm -hmm. just make it look, we know what we're doing financially. Yeah. So we yeah. don't getting this letter from hmrc next year saying oh, <laughs> pounds so that's why i really wanted to talk about the topic of taxes today so with that being said so what i've got actually is a few myths and a few um yeah a few myths yeah. that people have and misconceptions people have around the topic of taxes so i'm just going to put a few of them to you and then yeah see what you have to say kind of thing to debunk yeah, myth, yeah? and then yeah. i've seen a few people have submitted questions into the question box so what i'll do is maybe do a few myths go to the questions and then come back and do the rest of those myths. so you guys are joining now if you have any questions for ben benedicta get them in the question box now because listen this is expert <laughs> advice that you're getting here. i'm not paying a penny for so make the most of it now while you can so yeah <laughs> those questions quickly yeah okay cool so the first one i've got is but it's better not to make more money because you'll pay more taxes on all of your income so i think that's a misconception that a lot of people have that yeah if i'm making too much money then i'm especially like let's say my salary is on like 40k or whatever so it's like i'm close to that um tax okay. bracket, yeah. bracket is it yeah. worth me actually getting another um yeah. come in so pay definitely you. for that one by the way for anyone who hasn't if you check out my page i talked about this last week because i did, we did a similar thing um and i actually broke it down in terms of different examples if you're yeah, in yeah, different situations how to work out your tax bracket and all of that kind of stuff so check that out on my page um and why should they give me a follow <laughs> but anyways with the with the income and like you say this is such a big myth the way that the tax brackets work for your income is that if you are on a lower tax bracket, so let's say you earn um, below, for, so first of all, everybody, up until people who earn 100K, everybody gets 12,570 pounds free. Yeah, so tax free. If you earn up, mm. you can earn up to 12,570 pounds and the tax man is not gonna bother you, right? First of all, so part that, yeah? Then your first 33,000, whatever, basically that takes you up to 50K, is taxed at 20%. So now if you earn more than 50K, yes, you will be taxed at 40%, but the, fifth, the first 50K minus the 12,500 is still taxed at 20%. So you're not going to, they're not gonna say, oh, because you earned 51,000 pound, now we're gonna tax your whole salary at 40%. That's not mm -hmm. how it works. So you will earn 50K and be taxed at 20%. And then the 1K on top, which you've earned, which is over the threshold, is what will be taxed at the 40%. So yes, you are earning more money, but yes, you are paying more tax, but you are equally earning more money. And I've always said, at the end of the day, I will rather have, for every extra pound that I earn, I will rather earn that and have 60p in my pocket than say, oh, because I don't want to pay 40p tax on the one pound, I'm not going to earn it. So <laughs> 60p can still buy you something more than, do you get what I mean? So Nothing, yeah. I say go for it and don't be limiting yourselves, especially if you are black 
and from ethnic minorities, shoot for the stars because yes. we have a long way to go to catch up with the rest of the world. Come on. No, it's very true. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for debunking that bit. So yeah, guys, don't worry about the fact that you're going to be paying more tax. That's a good problem to have. Exactly. <laughs> basically okay cool so the next one i've got is i don't understand taxes so i don't really understand taxes so HM hmrc are not going to find me if i get my tax return wrong is now, that true you and i both know that that's a lie, right <laughs> that's like saying to the judge oh i didn't know there were speed cameras or there was a speed limit so please can you let me off when you get caught for speeding you know it's not that's not good enough ignorance as they say in law please correct me my lawyers out there Ignorance is not an excuse. Like, you can't get off just by saying you didn't know. Um, the most they will do is say, oh, since you didn't know, we will send you the information so you can now know. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> so paying. You can now know and you can pay what you still owe. <laughs> <laughs> no that's fair enough and it's funny you use that parking attendant example because i've actually done that before and it didn't work like i was like no but i didn't know i went to sign and i didn't understand it like that's not that's not my business you need to pay. the amount of people that would be pulling that stunt right they would just be like oh, i didn't know i didn't know i didn't know no, it's not good no definitely okay <laughs> okay cool so i'm only earning a small amount for my business so i don't actually need to tell the tax man so, okay, so with your business, it depends. Are you registered as self-employed or are you registered as a limited company? Now, I'm self-employed. So, no, I'm just so, hypothetically speaking. So if you're self-employed, then you can earn up to £1,000 without telling the tax man. It's not illegal. That is fine. Whether you earn that via cash or you earn it right into your account, cool. That's fine. Up to £1,000. If you For the whole year? Every year, yes. Oh. Every year, not come up. <laughs> not come up. <laughs> Every year, you can earn up to £1,000. Um, and there are other allowances, for example, as well. Like If you have a lodger staying in your house, you can earn up to... It used to be 7000 I need to probably check the amount, but before it used to be up to £7,000 a year as well without having to pay or notify anyone. It's an, it is legal, not illegal. But anything you earn above that is where you have to tell the tax man. So if you are now earning £2,000 from your side um, hustle, technically, you, number one, you should be registered as self-employed. And number two, you should be filling a tax return. Now, a lot of people get confused about, oh, but I already have a job. Am I allowed to register? Do I, you know, how does it work? Mm -hmm. You are allowed to be a PAYE, normal employee, get your salary from your employer and still be registered as self-employed and even be a company director. Of course, every company might have some clauses, especially if you're in professional services like myself, where you have to declare if you're doing anything outside of work, but they don't necessarily stop you from doing it. You just have to declare and they will be the ones to say, oh no, this is a conflict or it's not a conflict. For example, you're an accountant and then you're selling cakes on the weekend. I don't really see your company saying, mm -hmm. no, you can't sell cakes. Do you get what I mean? Um, uh, as long as it's not hindering, hindering your work with them. So yeah, you can do both. You can do all three. Good. So now we know, guys. <laughs> um, okay, so the next one. If I set up a limited company, I can avoid paying taxes. So setting up a limited company does not make you avoid paying taxes. <laughs> You still need to pay tax. It's just that there's different limits. So remember we talked about um, a couple of minutes ago, the threshold, i.e. So for example, if you're somebody who's already earning more than 50K and you have a side hustle or business and caveat, your business is quite profitable in the sense that you are earning more than a thousand pounds upwards, maybe even more than 2000 pounds. It is advisable to set up a limited company, not because it means you will not pay tax, but what it means is that you can pay corporation tax rather than the personal tax if you earn the money direct to yourself it means that you would have to pay at the higher threshold which is the 40 percent however if it goes into your business business all businesses have a straight line tax of 19 percent 19 percent corporation tax so after doing your income and expenses you only need to pay 19 percent um tax on what you have earned on your profit rather than the whole income um, and the reason why that's also beneficial is because what it means is that you can actually take out a dividend for example which is tax-free up to 2k um, you can also have other expenses go straight through your business that reduce your profit and then you pay the 20 percent tax so that's why it's advisable to set up a business not because you're going to pay no tax whatsoever <laughs> but again caveat the administration the administration for a limited company is much more onerous than the administration for a self-employed person. So if you are 
limited company you're and you're not that good with numbers not good with hmrc and company tax you're likely to probably need an accountant and the cost of an accountant is obviously more compared with if you're doing a self-assessment tax return if that makes sense so you need to kind of weigh it up mm. to make sure that the profitability of your business is enough to cover the the the, ta the, the accountant's Bill, cost yeah what i mean yeah no totally totally makes sense <laughs> i'm like should we pause because i'm seeing a, a few more questions coming in so let me pause do a couple of questions and then we'll go back to yeah. our mix so okay so da, da, da. we've got a question from cycle savvy chick what, when happen what happens i guess to all the spend a business does before opening a business account so if you keep your receipts, you can actually claim for your business expense up to six years before your business actually um, opened or started trading. So make sure you keep your receipts. And when your accountant does your return, they can also put in those expenses against your profit. So let's say in your first year, you made £12,000 profit, for example, but already before the business started or before you opened your, um, before your business started, you already spent, I don't know, 10000 that will be taken away from your profit. So actually your profit will just be 2K and then you only need to pay tax on that amount. However, it's worth understanding the, the business, the, the business expense, it's not really about you having a business account. Of course you should have a business account, but it's just more about anything that you spent. So it could have gone through your personal account, even though I do not advocate for that. And as an accountant, I will be pissed off if you send me <laughs> your personal finance, your personal accounts to sort out. Yeah, I'm not going to do it for you. But anyway, yeah. you know, you should have it. But it's not really about the business account. It's more about the trading date, i.e. has a business just um, just been opened and all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Next one. Um style on rotation said so just started trading is there a minimum you need to be making to register with him hmrc or should should you just register because i oh, can you see more question how can you see more of the question but it's not the whole question it just says or should you just register because i have and then it just says dot 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 oh okay um you can either see more of it than me i think that she uh, i'm self-employed was the last part of it uh, because i'm self-employed okay so he was saying, should you just register with HMRC? So basically you need to, like I said, if you're, if you're doing self-employed, then you can earn up to £1,000. The moment you start earning more than £1,000, you should be registered with HMRC. That's the criteria. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So, oh, let me just ask the last one, actually, since we're doing Q&A. Next one. What to look for in an accountant? What questions should you be asking? Um, I think I might be biased on that one. What do you look for an accountant? It I'm not. If somebody is claiming to be an accountant, they should be registered with a with a, a, a body. So you maybe you can you want to ask them who are they registered with. But if I'm honest, if you're not really an accountant <coughs> and you don't really understand that terminology, I'm not sure how much value it will add to you yeah. as an individual. But I guess you want to be making sure that they're registered in terms of are they like SEMA registered? Are they registered with ACCA? Are they registered with ICAEW? Um, also, you want to maybe be re asking them do they do you have any software that's included so some accountants i at the moment i don't do that but some accountants maybe will say when you come with them we also give you like um an accounting software free for you to um register your stuff so something like that maybe you want to ask um also maybe yeah insurance they should be they should have insurance so like i have um uh, uh pub, is it public liability insurance yeah. to make sure that any advice i give in case it turns into a court case heaven forbid you know yeah. Um, it, it, that whatever costs and whatever legal stuff comes out of that is covered by my insurance. But again, if they're registered via their accounting body, that's all compulsory. Like you can't get your letters if you don't show them your insurance. So that kind of stuff, yeah. But I think you might be wondering, so a lot of people, and maybe I should clear this myth as well. A lot of people come to me as an accountant because they've got, you know, HMRC have just sent them a letter, or Companies House have just sent them a letter. I can help you do the letter, right? But then some people expect or think that you're going to send them, for example, monthly finance reports or you're going to walk with them through the year. I can do that, but that's a different service. And what I find is that sometimes people think that their accountant is going to do all of these things, but you didn't go to your accountant for that. 
You went to your accountant to get you out of trouble or just to make sure that you tick the boxes, right? Ticking the boxes is different from me providing a value added service. So for example, I can also help you to understand your numbers, do monthly reports, do management accounting, and I cannot touch your company's house stuff and not touch your HMRC. You could argue that, oh, why are you doing that? But now I've got a fine from HMRC. Those are two different services and you would need to be clear on what you do want. And also, of course, you're going to have to pay for the two different services. Yeah. Because I know some people complain and they're like, oh, my accountant didn't do this, he didn't do that. But did you ask for that service? Mm. It's like going to a restaurant and asking for a burger and complaining that they didn't give you nuggets. <laughs> like, that's what you ordered. You get what you ordered. Yeah. But I guess that comes from people not knowing or not understanding what it is that they need an accountant for. to be fair, I think do. that us accountants, my fellow accounting colleagues, I think mm. we can do a better job as well at like explaining yeah. this kind Educator. of stuff too. <laughs> mm. No, 100%. Okay, so back to my myths that we're going to be debunking. Thanks for adding that extra one in there as well, actually. Um, okay, so the next one I've got is the. Oh, I've done that one. Have I done that one? No, I haven't done that one. <laughs> the rich never pay any taxes. Thanks for those loopholes. <laughs> Let's be realistic. It's not that they don't pay any I don't think there's anybody who lives in a Western world, in a civilized country, who does not pay tax. Even if you don't pay tax directly, you pay VAT. That's a tax, yeah? We yeah. all pay tax. So let's just park that to one corner. Yeah. And do you really think that the likes of Coca-Cola, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and all of that really get away with paying zero tax? <laughs> I don't think so. I think what the challenge is or what the myth is about is more about, oh, they don't pay as much tax. Enough. And yeah. that's what you see in the headlines oh amazon or whoever it is let me not say amazon. amazon's always my default i don't know let yeah, me yeah. Say mcdonald's <laughs> mcdonald's um you know paid you know escapes whatever or reduce their tax bill by however many million and it's just clickbait because the money looks so big compared to us but let's be realistic as an accountant there are ways and even for a small business the same way I just said to you guys, if you're already in a high tax bracket, over, open up a limited company because you only pay 19% tax as opposed to 40% tax. That's not illegal. That's just me saving tax. So if, if when, you, when you have a big company, McDonald's and all of those, of course the numbers are going to look big. But in comparison, they might just be saving 5% on their tax bill, which they are legally allowed to do. But the newspapers just want people to, you know, get all uppity and read yeah. newspapers. So that's why they do it. So no, companies do not get away with paying zero tax unless, of course, they really are unprofitable. So I was scrolling through Instagram the other day and I saw a post where it talked about um, six major companies that don't make any profit. And I believe like Airbnb was on there. Um, Disney was on there. So big names that we all know about. And someone might argue, well, if they don't make profit, then they don't make, um, they don't pay taxes, which is probably true. But then it does mean that they are highly leveraged, i.e. they have a lot of debt. I don't want to go too much into detail in terms of profit and loss and all of that kind of stuff. But it is actually possible for a company to still be trading, to still be running, still paying their staff salary and making a loss, which means that they don't pay tax. But it just means, so you can imagine when someone, again, using the big names, McDonald's, if McDonald's would go to the bank and say, oh, we need a 12 million pound loan, the truth is the bank will probably give it to them, mm -hmm. even though they might be in minus. But because you know that McDonald's is a profitable, profitable in the sense that it brings in money, you're roughly okay that they will be able to pay the monthly amount. But on their balance sheet, they actually owe minus 12 million. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So when you put it into con context, that's why it looks like they're getting away with it. But actually, the truth is, if you look into their bottom line, they're probably not as profitable um, as they appear to be. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes total sense. OK, cool. So the next one I've got is, I guess you kind of touched on this earlier, actually, is side hustle income is tax free. So by what you said to us earlier, that's not the case. <laughs> yeah, if you're earning more than a thousand pounds, a thousand pound a year. Tax. I know, don't get me wrong. I know there are a lot of people that get away with not doing it and don't do it and all of that. And maybe HMRC isn't really going to go and knock on every single person. Yeah, exactly. Off. But if you want to be legal and above board, you should be declaring it. Okay. And then the last one I've got is there's no difference between taking a salary and taking a dividend. There is major difference. <laughs> so first of all, a dividend is something that is paid to directors only and it is paid after um, tax. So after you've calculated your profit 
and after you've paid the, the tax man, then you take a dividend. Yeah, so it's like last of the last of the last of the last, yeah? Salaries are paid to employees only. Now, where it gets confusing is that you can be a director okay. of your company, but you can also be an employee in your company. But now, one of the things I always say, so I have people that are quite like, oh, you know, I want to uh, pay myself a salary via my company. That's fine. But is your company, the question I would ask, is your company in a position to also not just pay and cover your salary? Are you in a position to also pay your pension for yourself? Because if you're an employee, that's a legal requirement, 3%. Are you also in a position to pay employee, employers national contribution? So when you get your pay slip as a standard PAYE employee, which is what you would become in your company, we all have like the, the salary and then you have like NI contributions, which are taken away. As an employer, which you would have to become to pay yourself as an employee, <laughs> you also have to pay employers national contribution tax. So many people think, oh yeah, I just want to pay myself a salary of, I don't know, £1,000 a month. Yeah which is fine, but there are different thresholds. I don't know them now. I'm not going to reel, reel, reel them off the top of my head, but there are different thresholds. If you pay your employees up to a certain amount, you have to pay the government as well for being an employer and pay the tax, if that makes sense. So yeah. there's all of these other things that people don't consider when it comes to paying yourself as an employee. I always advise, if you have a job, a decent paying job and it's enough to cover your bills and you're in the early stages of your business, you're just developing and you have a limited company, I would suggest that you just take a dividend at the end of the year. Let your salary that you have with your PAYE um, job be the thing to fund you and then just take out profits and use your business to fund your lifestyle to an extent i.e. do you need a new camera that you use for your video recordings or whatever social media you can put yeah. that through your business do you need a new laptop that you use you know you can put that through your business so you, you get your benefit via that method rather than by putting yourself on as an employee on the, okay of course i know that businesses will grow and i'm praying that that will be for the case for me you know whereby you do get to a point where you then want to leave your full-time em employment and actually genuinely become an employee but at that point you should be making enough profit to cover the salary profit and all the expensive. other taxes and all of that kind of stuff and also adding payroll on will also increase your accountancy fees no doing account as an accountant me just doing your HMRC returns or corporation tax returns is one thing. If you, if I'm then doing your payroll, again, you're going to pay me for that extra service because okay. that's another thing on the menu. So you need to bear that in mind as well. That is really, I've learned so much on this live. Boy, that is, <laughs> that's really, really, really interesting. <laughs> that's really, really good. No, thanks for sharing. And I think that was the last of my myths. So I guess, are there any other myths or any other common taboo things that you hear all the time that you want to dispel now on this live before we move on to the next part? Um, no, I think we've covered the most of we've them, you know, pilot, trying to think. get away with not paying tax. Um, I think this one's slightly off, but it's worth saying. So the same way you can pay, you, the same way you have um, a tax-free allowance of 2K, so you can earn up to 2K dividend, um, you can draw out 2K dividend from your limited company without having to pay any tax. There's also capital gains allowances as well. So for example, if you sell like, a, if you sell a property or whatever, you can, People always talk about, um, you know, trying to get away from paying inheritance tax and that kind of stuff, capital gains. Yes, you have to pay capital gains tax, but there's still an allowance. So, for example, you can earn up to 300 and you can sell your property for up to 325K, for example, and not have to pay tax on it as long as it's your primary residence. And then if you earn anything above that and you don't use it or you don't reinvest it into a primary place of abode, then you um, then you have to pay tax. But again, it's worth speaking to an accountant because they will know the allowances that you're allowed. A lot of people see here tax and they just think negative, negative, never negative. But there are, the country is not that, it's not as bad as you think. And maybe because I'm an accountant, I'm a bit yeah. <laughs> But it's not as bad as people make it seem. Like there are allowances that do allow you to have a decent life. Like they're not trying to take everything from you basically. So it's just worth um, understanding. Even down to things like marriage, a marriage allowance tax. So not a tax, marriage allowance so for example if you're married and only one of you is working you can you see the 12,570 pounds which I said is um is a tax-free um allowance for mm -hmm. everybody because one spouse is not earning it they're not working to earn it right 
you can transfer that allowance to the one person who is working. Yes. You can transfer no. that. Yeah, you can transfer that allowance. And so then it reduces the tax because it's one household. But you have to be married. This is not partners. Uh, what? Cohabiting. Yeah. So this we should have had this conversation person. last year. Oh, man. <laughs> can you backdate it? Or does it work like that? I don't know about backdating. <laughs> I don't know about backdating. So, yeah, probably need to do some Google searching on that. Yeah, I'm going to. Oh, no way. I never knew about that. You see? So much to be learned. But no, thank you. That's really, really helpful, really useful, really insightful. I see all the love hearts. So people are really enjoying all of this free information that they're getting. So <laughs> definitely make sure you slide in Benedict's DMs after this live if you want more detailed information. Don't be asking her any questions after this live. <laughs> so, yeah, ask your question now or slide into DMs to actually pay for the services. So next question I've got for you. So next part. So that's the uh, myths that we've finished debunking. So I guess, oh, actually, no. So I'm looking at my questions. I think somebody actually asked one of my next questions already. Uh, yeah, so I guess resources next is the next question. So in terms of finding out more information about taxes, where would you recommend people go? Obviously, they can DM you to ask questions and find out about your services. But just in case, or just in terms of general research, general understanding, where would you recommend? Other than a Google search, because, yeah, <laughs> Google That's is your right. Just before I do that, um, Q oh, there question? One has commented to say the government website says you can backdate the marriage allowance to three years. <gasps> for anybody who asked about that, yeah. Oh, thank you. Amazing. Yeah, the marriage allowance. So, yeah, Google that for anyone who's interested. But, oh, yeah, <laughs> in terms of extra information, so... Obviously, gov.uk is our bread and butter for all of these things, tax and all of that kind of stuff. Um, literally, do a Google search. Go onto the gov.uk website, website. Search whatever you want. It should come up. The information is free. But of course, if you would like to have a one-on-one um, -on -one session or whatever, then people like my humble self are available. You can go onto my website to book a consultation and we can talk about it. Um, especially for your business tax, your business um, accounting and all of that kind of stuff that you need help with. Um, just book a session, free consultation, and then we will take it from there. If you need very specific advice, um, then yeah, you know, it would be charged at a fee, but um, yeah, it would be very reasonable. <laughs> nah, yeah, I'm sure it will be. No, that's amazing. You've been absolutely amazing. I guess the last question, well, last couple of questions actually. So I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyway. Um, in terms of getting an accountant, at what point would you say of the process that we could that someone could go from doing it themselves to kind of enlisting the services of an accountant so you even with the doing it yourself mm -hmm. you still have to know what you're doing even you might not be earning that much so for example i have people who might not have even earned anything in their company or their company is even dormant but if yeah. you don't know how to navigate the system you might still need an accountant so it's not necessarily about how much, how much earning, it's yeah. more about comfortability with the system don't the government um website and the way things are set up in theory you should be able to do it yourself but even as an accountant i can tell you that that stuff is bloody annoying and complicated right they, it's not just one place they're going to send you codes then they're <laughs> going to send you this and then they're going to link up here and then you have to register for this separately and do this so there's a lot of different parts but in theory you should be able to if you have enough time you should be able to sit down and do it yourself the reason why people hire accountants is because they can't understand it or they're also not good with numbers as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not really about how much, it's about your competency, basically. Yes. So there's no, it's not illegal unless you're earning, obviously, a certain amount of threshold. So I think up to, um, up to a certain amount, I think it's 85,000 or so, where you have to have like, your accounts legally signed. But it's not illegal to not have a, a, an official accountant that does your stuff for you. You can do it yourself. But if you cannot understand the website, you don't know where to submit stuff, you don't know how to produce an yeah. account, you don't know how to do the tax return, blah, you don't know how to fill in the numbers, you know what number you should be putting in, you need an accountant. Let's get an accountant, yeah. <laughs> so the moment, the moment you need to um, submit something, um, I would say that, you know, for me, especially for uh, if you're self-employed, the moment you register as self-employed, I would say start to keep your records. I have a service which is called the director's onboarding. The director's onboarding is just a one-off service. And if you've just registered either self-employed or limited company, what I will do is I'll just talk you through some of the things that you need to know in advance. Um, 
for example, like your bank account, how to keep your books and that kind of stuff, what kind of software and system you can use and how to use it. And then at the end of the year, when you're um, after the, the financial year, so April, you will get a letter from HMRC. At that point, you can reach out to an accountant and say, I need to do a self-assessment tax return. Um, and that should be fine. They can use all your information. However, if you are a limited company, I suggest that the day you register as a limited company, you get an accountant. Because if you're going to pay monthly, and if, you're, if you don't think you'll be in a position to pay the one off fee at the end of the year, then it's suggested that you do it at the beginning. And why? So that you have somebody on speed dial, like somebody that you can call, oh, I want to do this. Should I do it like this? Should I not do it like that? Also, to save the extra weight of the heavy cost at the end of the year a lot of people wait to the end of the year when hmrc are already messaging them and it's like and then you tell them the bill and then they can't afford it whereas if you pay monthly you know it helps you as well so yeah yeah that makes sense no absolutely amazing gosh you, yeah you've been brilliant on this live i've <laughs> learned so much like, i wish i took notes but it's good i'm going to save it anyway to igtv so i could play it back and you guys can play it back too and take notes because there was so much so much gems shared like absolutely loads is there a question that is missed out? Yeah, something about um, an accountant so that you use the, rec the correct SIT code. Exactly. So I also have a company, uh, a service for business registration. If you're going to register your company um, and you don't know what SIT codes you should be using, then you probably should speak to an accountant and just get an accountant to do it for you. If you tell me what kind of business you are trying to open or what you're trying to do with your business, then I would be able to help you with the SIT code and all of that kind of stuff or any accountant um, who does formations. Cool. And I guess the final question before we let you go, in case you guys have, if you guys have, have any last questions, quickly get them in now before Benedict goes, because I'm about to ask my last question <laughs> I have on my list. So yeah, you've got a couple of minutes before, yeah, before you've lost your time, any opportunity to ask your question. So last question I have, or it's not really a question really, it's just, I guess, over to you to just share any bit of like last minute tax advice to like new business owners, side hustlers, sole traders, etc. Yeah. Like yeah. I would say, so this kind of links in with the same way you would save um, as an individual for, you know, upcoming expenses, right? When you do your mm -hmm. budgeting and you do all of that, oh, I'm going to buy a car, I'm going to buy a house, we'll saving for it. You should be saving for your tax bill. So whether you're self-employed or a limited company, it takes one minute to open up a, a, a savings account on your, um, a sub savings account on your business account. Every time you earn money, you should be saving a portion of that towards the tax bill. Um, whether you're self-employed, if you're self-employed, Monzo, and you have like one of these um, new age accounts like Monzo and Starling, they have like tax pot accounts, so which allows you to begin to save during the end of the year. What you don't want to do is leave it to the end of the year. The end of the year comes, your tax return is due, and then they tell you you need to pay £5,000 worth of tax, and you're like, I don't have the money. <laughs> How do I pay it? Yeah, so you want to be saving in advance for your tax bill saving in advance for your corporation tax bill as well even if you're a limited company don't spend everything as my mom yeah. says or they say as the as the elders say don't eat with 10 hands <laughs> oh no, i haven't even heard that one before don't eat with 10 hands. <laughs> no that's good that's really good no absolutely brilliant advice and i've seen someone's just popped one last question in so let me quickly go and ask it uh Christina at home says, do you have advice on getting a specialist accountant in property for setting up a property business? Uh, yes. Yeah, so you probably just want someone who's done it before. So, for example, I have some customers who are um, into property um, and have a you know, a separate property business, buying and selling a property or buying and renting a property. So, yeah, you just want someone who's probably done it before. Um, and, yeah, you know, yeah, you can go with a specialist. You can go with a generalist. The truth is the way accountancy works is that um, the system tends to, um, it kind of preempts you. So for example, when I'm about to do a tax return or a, 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 a set of company account, it will ask me, is this business a property business? It will ask me what kind of business it is. So if I say yes, that it's a property business, then it will help me and, you know, bring out the, the allowances and all of that kind of stuff. Because this, the truth is, even though, no ma even the best accountants with the rates and stuff, they change, they, they change annually. They change mm -hmm. regularly. So, you know, today, like I said, you know, for example, before the allowance used to be £12,500 for a long time. It just this April gone, they changed it to 12570 So the way the accounting system works is that it will update it for you to make sure that the allowances are at the right rate. So I wouldn't, it's nice to have a, 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 a property specialist, but you can also go with a generalist anyway. Um, it, should, it should hopefully, you know, achieve the same result. 
absolutely but, yeah, if you're looking for an accountant hit hit me up and we can talk no definitely i'm sure they will after the mouth <laughs> i'll get some free advice you've been given on this live free advice yeah no, absolutely amazing like thank you thank you it's been so invaluable like absolutely amazing so really really enjoyed our live conversation i don't know if you have any questions or anything you want to ask me before we go we literally got like five more minutes if not we can yeah i love the audience i need to clap for the audience you guys are amazing as well you guys have put in a lot of gems as well better better you in two and q khan one i see you guys <laughs> yeah no you guys have been amazing thank you thank you all for tuning in thank you for listening and sticking around with us no it's been a really really good live on this hot summer's day you guys are yeah. here Live, and I appreciate you guys definitely and thank you once again Benedict Sarah. you've been amazing and definitely thank worth the wait I've wanted to get you on for so long so now I'm glad that we finally got to sit down and have a chat thank and we definitely you. good luck with your last episode next week of the, thank of the you. season thank you have a lovely evening thank you you too thank bye you. guys before you go I'm going to take oh. a shot I always do this so smile <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Hey, send that to me after, please. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.